everyone, Freedy here, here and welcome back to another Destiny 2 build where today we're going to be focusing on the one weapon category that not many people talk about or in general use and that's the swords but we're not going to focus on just the one simple and born build with a sword and such and be done with it oh no 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 we're going to create a powerful seasonal dawn style sword build that will not only provide you increased damage per kills but you'll also be a source of orb of lights for you and your allies while having near infinite amount of sword ammo per kills and so forth. I like to think I finally cracked it with this build that not only is fun and different than anything else we created but is one of the best in terms of Seasonal Dawn sword titan builds in game as it has everything you want from a mighty sword to near perfect fashion. So let's start off with the subclass which will be the Code of the Protector where within the subclass we're going to make full use of all its abilities to a certain degree. Now the way I imagined the build was to not focus so much on the subclasses and perks ability themselves but to make the weapons and exotics we pick to ideally fill the gap in for where the subclasses many usages would be such as building super, melee and grenade energy on its own court. So ideally less relying on supers and more relying on their own gear. So Code of the Protector offers what I would describe the most flexibility within subclass options as they are more of a one and done action and not requiring a lot of focus to make the build overall better. Now I need a subclass that would offer me a protection with a lot of uptime while also supporting my innate ability to produce orbs on the fly and I found that Code of the Protector ticks all the boxes that I need which I'm very pleased with. Abilities such as Defensive Strike and Turn the Tide will offer me an increased amount of protection via an overshield that will aid me when closing the gap against an enemy while Valiant Force can also heal me and my allies when we're in a pinch so with the two combined it can create a fantastic synergy for those who are, are relying on close quarter fighting as their way of life. We then finally have Wall of Door which is another amazing ability as we're having a overshield and damage buff on top but it doesn't sadly stack with high energy fire so you're not going to get anything OP or crazy from there. And then for grenades you can add in either the magnetic or suppressor grenades, anything that can soften up a target. There's no right or wrong answer to what you pick, it's down to you. The other subclasses feel more at home if I was using a weapon that felt more applicable to their perks and although you could say Code of the Missile for Initia Overdrive is doable, I feel like we're not making use of all the tree's ability, unlike the Code of Protector which does it naturally. For the weapons now, your only weapon you're going to want to focus on is your heavy, which will be your sword of choice. Your primary and secondary can be anything you think is best for whatever content you're going to be using them in, which means you can go for the standard loadout that will make full use of anti-barrier rounds, overload or unstoppable rounds. For your heavy, you want to look for a sword that has a lot of impact damage, can easily stun off enemies within a light swing attack or two, and also not able to drain all your heavy in one go. And for that, there's only one weapon that can achieve this, which is the legendary Throne Cleaver Sword, which you can get by doing the Heroic Menagerie, with a Titan of course. And now, the reason why I say a Titan is because it's locked to the specific content for this specific class, the same with Hunters and Warlocks. And to make it even more difficult to get, it's also RNG based as well, so at the end of the content you have the 50-50 chance of getting it, which more or less means you may get it within your first three runs or you may not get it at all. Now what makes this heavy special is that not only is it a re-rollable aggressive frame to date in game but it can roll with a perk called counter attack which states guarding while being attacked grants a damage buff for 5 seconds and when you think about it 5 seconds is really short but damage you receive is a lot we're talking 50% damage increase for the 5 seconds you have. Now combine that with the stronger gauntlets for its protection and you pretty much won't ever need to use a gun ever again. Unfortunately I can't get this version for the weapon drop at all no matter how many times I tried it so if you're like me then alternatively you can always use whirlwind blades instead which at times 5 will have a 30% damage increase. It's low but it's still worth using considering it's just light attacks you use. Further combine this with tireless blades or relentless strike and you'll soon be completed with your build. You could by chance also use Striker Shorehand as well for the Surrounded perk which will offer a 40% damage buff and then with his Surrounded spec will add on an extra 55% extra damage, so 95% overall damage. Only issue with this is that you have to be surrounded for the perk to work and against most bosses who don't have minions around them it will fall flat in terms of damage, its damage will be good but not the best when that is full best. 
which is why it's best to go with the above recommendation I've gone with for now. Within the stats section, you're going to want to focus your efforts on both resilience and recovery, as you will be facing enemies a lot more up front rather than at distance, with some enemies even being specialised for up close engagements by design. The sweet spot you want to look for would be resilience and recovery at either the 50 to 60 ranges, as any more and points are wasted. As shown, my resilience stat is at 68, which is more than enough for me to face stomp a attack or two, while my recovery is a little more on the lower end at 45. Although we can push it to an extra 10 by simply getting rid of our resilience mod that we currently have equipped it and swapping it for a recovery mod instead. That's for me, but it may vary between you as well. The rest of the stats are placed here and there, with my discipline being quite high because of the already built in stats in the armour. You may also want to look into your mobility and strength stat as well, as these will also offer some advantage within the build, especially for covering ground and proccing defensive strike more often. The new seasonal dawn mod Powerful Friends can offer you a plus 20 increase towards mobility towards your character and your allies, which can be helpful if you want to both help your allies at the same time and also cover ground much more quicker. For armour, you're going to need 4 pieces of Seasonal Dawn armour, with 3 of them being Arc Affinity, so you can make use of the Swords mods, and the last one being Void, so you can make use of Stacks on Stacks, or Arc Affinity, so you can slot in Powerful Friends mods. All of this can be fairly easily achieved by upgrading vendors such as Shax or Zavala to get the necessary pieces. And of course, the main assorted piece to complete the set is the Stronghold Gauntlets, which can provide 2 things, increased movement upon blocking, and health regen the moment we block our attack. And of course this will work in our favour with the build we have. In terms of affinity, it doesn't require any specific affinity towards it, although solar affinity for momentum transfer could have some usage. Now for the mods we have the following and just a heads up, these are needed if you wish to use your sword for long periods, as without these sword mods, you won't be able to run say a full length of a strike with just your sword available. So with that being said, head Resilience, Sword Ammo Finder and High Energy Fire mod, Arm, Recovery mod, Chest, Recovery and Stacks on Stacks mod, Leg, Sword Scavenger and Strike and Light mod, Mark, Resilience, Bleeding Edge and Taking Charge mod. So moving quickly into the testing of the build, in the Tribute Hall I did some testing against the Ogre to see exactly how much we would be packing in terms of damage, and damage varies a lot from with High Fire mod and without it. From Whirlwind Blade with no stacks, we have the following. At times 2, because for some reason times 1 it skips, we have 14,234. Times 3, 15,942. Times 4, 17,650. Times 5, 18,504. Now with Charge with Light and Whirlwind Blade, we have the following. Times 2, 17,081. Times 3, 19,130. Times 4, 21,180. Times 5, 22,205. So as you can see, there is a noticeable damage increase when it's buffed with high energy fire increase and when it's not buffed, but it's not by a lot by the looks of it. We could for example use the Striker Shorthand to increase damage and make it come off the charts with how much it could do, but with Strikers with Shrounded and Spec, it's extremely situational like I mentioned earlier. Nonetheless, although the damage looks low, you also have to look into what else the builder is packing. And as you can see, when I kill an enemy one after another, you may have noticed me dropping a number of orb of lights one after another, but you only see one appear for me. This is all because I have stacks on stacks, which gives me another charge of light for every orb of light I picked up, and a mass work foam cleaver as well. And what I wanted to create out of this is an all powerful sword time build, you can dish out damage out through combinations of light and heavy attacks, but also produce orbs of light one after another for me and my teammates. You can then go ahead and use those to buff themselves if they have specific mods that rely on orbs of light, or use it to chain their supers, which then I can come in and use those orbs to charge myself for extra damage and so forth and so forth. Basically, your uptime for having high energy fire on your sword is going to skyrocket and make you near invincible in up close fights in terms of endurance. On top of that, we then have Stronghold available, which will provide me with an extra movement boost from blocking and instant health regen from blocking an attack, so we keep moving and killing, killing and moving until I can't do it anymore. And then further beyond Ultra, yes I've gone there, 
we have the sword mods attached to our armor, so we never run out of heavy unless we face something with a ton of health, aka a boss. I don't really need to explain this in full, but when it comes to having just a sword as your main primary and how you can pretty much support your team via orb generation, this is as good as it gets, and this build will get you back into trying out swords in general, although they are limited in terms of what they do. They do have their place in game, but not a lot in terms of certain endgame content. Here's an example, Nightfalls or Strikes. Using this build in one of the two contents will bring endless fun for both you and your allies as you slash away casually at the endless amount of waves of enemies you face while producing orbs and increasing damage by defaults. Or perhaps you want to use this in the menagerie for the endless waves to add to your games. Or even better off, why not Gambit, as swords against both adds and bosses is suitable for sustaining damage. Whatever you choose, this build will shine in, except on the Crucible, don't, don't do that. But what about the downside you say? Well, here's a few. Blocking with swords are helpful for short bursts, but for big damage, it's a no-go as they can bypass your shields easily and quickly end you. Number two, you can't rush your attacks against some enemies as they can be either aggressive or they don't have much of an opening, which if they have the latter, then good luck with surviving. Number three, be really careful against objects that can explode up close such as the Flamethrower Cabal, as if you use your heavy attacks on them, it will one-shot them. But, by chance, it may also detonate their backpack and one-shot you in the process. Something I've learned the hard way when facing this week's Sundial and Nightfall. And lastly, think before you charge in like some crazy viking, as you are pretty much naked the moment you charge at your enemies. You have a blocking ability that is limited, but useful. But when combined with the current subclass for a overshield you can proc, you can overcome a lot of fights thanks to it, but you must play your cards right if you wish for this to be in your favour. And if you don't plan your attacks, although yes you have a lot of sword ammo and the fact that your sword doesn't take any damage in terms of duration thanks to the new stronghold exotic, it doesn't mean you'll still not be able to get killed quite easily. But generally, there you have it, a nice and very powerful seasonal dawn titan build for everyone to give a go and try, and of course love. Hopefully with this idea going, I can expand more into the Warlock next, and then my Hunter eventually, in terms of the sword builds. I do have a few in mind, but I just want to balance them out a bit first before fully going in depth with them. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.